Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Palm Springs. 2020 film, finished watching it on Hulu. So you know the typical thing, I'll be reading the overview as written by the producers or directors or writers. I will read you the other uh, percentages of likes or dislikes from the other reporting sites. And then uh, after that, if you've not seen the movie and would like to watch the movie based or not based on my recommendation, I'm going to just turn off the video because there will be plot synopsis and character development. I wrote grade twice. Similar movies, major themes, maybe a couple for this one. It's kind of, kind of different. So where is the overview? It says, well, this isn't the overview I read before I watched it. It says, stuck in a time loop, two wedding guests develop a buddy romance while living the same day over and over again. And so when I watched, I read the review on Hulu, it was a lot, it didn't, it didn't indicate that it was going to be a time-looped movie. Regardless, I don't, I don't have the, the, um, the, or the, the intro from, from Hulu, but the Hulu intro was a lot better than that one. But regardless, as it says, it's just, I wanted to get away from the, these boring action movies that I've watched a thousand times, so I just flipped it through the romance, and it's like romance, drama, sci-fi is what it said. Um... It actually didn't even indicate before, like the Hulu indication had, had no indication of sci-fi. Regardless, I actually thoroughly enjoyed this one. I thought it was playful, I thought it was fun. Uh, again, I like ro romantic comedies. Um, the time loop cer certainly isn't completely unique, but I do, I do think it provides like a rich setting for an interesting writing or di differences as opposed to like a super serious or even you know just an action movie where it's like the, the unrealisticness is maybe not getting shot or not getting injured. Whereas in, you set up this movie where it's like, okay, you're stuck in a time loop, obviously not realistic at all, but now you know the rules of the game, and it's interesting to see how the characterizations and the plot develops. So I thought the plot developed well, I thought it was funny, I thought it was playful, I thought the tone was good, um, and the actual plot development I thought I thought was, was well written. So overall, I'm going to give it a B plus, I'm not going to put it in the A range, but I thoroughly thought this was substantially entertaining, fun, it's an hour and 30 minutes comedy. Romance sci-fi comedy with Andy Samberg, and I didn't recognize the, the female act, main actress. But at 7.4 out of 10 on IMBD, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, 3.8 out of 5 on Letterboxd, still whatever that is, and 86% liked it on Google. So I, I joined the choir on that one. I thought this was a very playful, fun, romantic comedy sci-fi type of deal. So if you've not seen it, would like to based off that recommendation, you want to turn off the video now. So the movie opens up, and you basically have um, this guy, Niles, who's played by Andy Samberg. He is dating a girl named Misty, who's kind of a rambunctious blonde. So the movie opens up, and she's getting ready. They're getting ready to go to a wedding between um, Tala and um, Abe. And they're, I think it's their, her sister. I think it's like three sisters. And so and they open up. And so Niles is like, that looks like a good leg. So they, they try to bang one out in the morning. Miles is having got trouble got getting a money shot. And so she's just like, he's just like jerking off as his girlfriend's getting dressed. So there, there was a, a good amount of raunchiness in this one, which is always, that's my kind of humor. But regardless, Niles can't get the nut. So he's always rubbing one out as, as uh, Misty's getting dressed. So they go to the, they go to the, the next kind of scene is Niles is just floating carefree in this pool on his pizza slice, uh, inflatable, drinking some beers. And so this dude, um, I think his Jerry, who is like, uh, I forget like what, what relation he is to the family, but this guy named Jerry's there. So he jumps in the pool with him and they, they're drinking some beers, talking about, you know, how the, how the day is going to go. And so they go to the wedding. Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Sarah. Sarah is the main female character. She is the older sister of the bride to be Talia, Tala, and there she's asked to give a a you know a speech at the wedding. So she goes up there and um, she's kind of like struggling to talk or whatever. And Niles kind of like abruptly again they're all dressed in like suits and Niles is just kind of dressed in like a like Hawaiian theme thing. And so at this point, you have no indication of, like, this is a time loop movie, and going into it, I did not know what was going to happen. And so he goes up there, he takes the, takes the mic from the, from the older sister, Tala, or from Sarah, and Misty's freaking out, like, Niles, what are you doing, what are you doing? And, and Niles gives a great speech. 
And so the grandmother is impressed. They have a, they have a night of uh, dancing. Everyone's having fun. They're at the reception, and Niles pretty pretty openly starts hitting on uh, Sarah. Which again, without knowing like what's going to happen, it's kind of just like strange. Like what's what's going on here? And this is all happens really quick. So before you didn't really know what like the main plot or motif of the movie is, and so he starts hitting on Sarah. Um, they're they're kind of hitting it off. They go and um, they go and they're like bonding. Literally, Misty, his Niles' girlfriend, is cheating on him with Jerry. So Jerry is literally eating Misty's box in the bathroom, the lights on, you can see them, and like below the brick wall, Niles and S Sarah are just like bonding over it. And Sarah's like, why don't you stop them? And she was like, oh, they're always meant to be, I support it or something, something like that. So the raunchiness factor was well done in this movie. Um, but regardless, they go out to the desert, they're about to hook up, and then out of nowhere, Niles gets shot in the back with an arrow. And so at this point, I'm just like, what is this movie? But then um, he like crawls into this cave and um, and uh, Sarah falls after him, and then they both wake up the next morning. And so that, at that point, that's when you realize this is a time looped movie where it's just they're repeating the same day over and over again. So at first, I was like, "What is going? Like, what is the development here? This raunchy dude now he just gets shot in the back. Is this going to be a complete slapstick movie with no depth whatsoever? Which I can do that as well. Um, but after and this this happens pretty quickly within like the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie, and that movie's an hour and 30 minutes. And so at this point, you realize what, what's happening. The reason Niles is nonchalant is because he's been living the same day over and over again for a long time. Um, he, he knows he knows that uh, his girlfriend Misty's cheating on him. <laughs> um, and so after that night, but now he's now pulled Sarah into into the time loop with him. And so she wakes up and she's freaking out. She's throwing stuff at him. She's getting all crazy. Um, and she basically is just like. Uh, Niles basically just explains like kind of the rules of the game are they go into this cave they're gonna live the same day over and over again it doesn't matter if they die they're gonna keep living the same day over and over again but the pain is real and they remember they remember their days but the people they're interacting with don't and so Niles knows like literally everything about the people and it's whatever whenever they die or whenever they fall asleep they wake up the, for repeating the same day so again not super novel I've certainly seen that in other movies with a reference at the end I can remember their names but I've certainly seen types of movies like this not really a comedy. Um, um, romance type of setting, but at, at that point it, it thoroughly had intrigued me. It's just again, because it, it, in the same way like um, end of the world or natural disaster type of movies intrigued me just for the breakdown of societal structure. Obviously this is unrealistic, but it still gives a new novel uh, like setting just to see like how people would behave in different scenarios. And so they do a bunch of, well at first um, Sarah's really restrictive to it. She tries to not fall asleep. She drives all the way somewhere, and then she wakes right back up. And so after a while, uh, they do a, several cycles. She just kind of gets used to it, and then they just start doing fun things. So they do a bunch of different stuff. They, they tattoo penises on each other's backs. They bond over you know, burritos, and Niles is just chill as fuck, kind of just enjoying, enjoying the, repeating the day over and over again. You learn that the dude that um, shot him in the back on their first kind of like date or at the wedding is this guy named Roy. He, he was another well-known actor that I don't remember his name, but I certainly recognized him. But basically, one, one of the previous nights, Niles and him were partying a bunch, doing a lot of coke, and Roy says something to the effect of, you know, this is the best day of my life, I never want it to end. And Niles is like, you know, coked out. He's like, I don't know. He's like, I'll show you this cave. And so Roy goes into the cave, now he's stuck there too. So Roy, when his day starts over, they, he wakes up in like Albuquerque. I mean, I'm not exactly sure where, where, where in the, I think it's somewhere in Arizona. But... Um, but regardless, Roy wakes up uh, uh, at a distance far enough away where he can't typically catch up to Niles, but he hates Niles for making him restart this day, so he's constantly trying to hunt Niles. So that, that was a fun, that was a fun addition. Um, while they're bonding, Sarah asks Niles who, she, who she, he had sex with during the time. He says he never had sex with Sarah, which later on he's admit they had lots of sex. <laughs> but he's like, you know, they, have, they go to this bar with a bunch of old people. There's a girl, a car, uh, character named Darla, who I don't know, 60 year old, you know, blue collar woman, and Niles is like, yeah, I had sex with, I had sex with Darla. Um, I, I, Jerry fucked me in the ass one time. I, and like, like, like one other, he like, he tells Sarah that he had tried to hook up with the bride at the, at the wedding. Um, so, so they just go back and forth like that. And then J Niles asks uh, Sarah who she's had sex with. And she like gets all offended and kind of refuses to answer, which develops into something else later. 
And so, again, they're doing fun stuff. At first, Sarah's like, you know, I'm, I'm just, they're driving down the road, and Sarah's like, you know, I'm just going to kill myself, and it's, it's going to stop. And Niles is like, you know, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, the pain is very real, so when she starts speeding up, you know, they're driving down like a, a pretty uh, highway out west in the desert. And so there's a big semi-truck coming, and Niles sees that she's just going to go head on into this car. And so Sarah's like, so Niall unbuckles his seatbelt and just puts his head like right in the position so it's going to snap his head off right away. And he's like, I'm just preparing for a quick death. And so it was one of the first cycles, but certainly a funny scene. And so now again, they're, they're having fun now at this point. And they're enjoying, they're repeating the same day. You know, they, they plant a bomb in the, in the wedding cake and then rescue the, the bomb or save them from the bomb. Um... And then one day, well, basically, after a while, Sarah gets really tired of it, and she's just like, you know, they all wake up, like, Niles and Sarah, they're like at a wedding congregation, so they kind of wake up, and everyone, the family's all around, and Niles can't seem to find Sarah. And so, Sarah, Sarah has gone to study some quantum physics, which, again, it wasn't, I was hoping that they didn't get too, too involved in that one, because that's always, that's always a distraction, which it really didn't, and again, it's all, all, already a, it was just a fun movie, so it didn't really detract from me much. Whereas in like a superhero movie, or if it's supposed to be serious, and you're trying to add some quantum mechanics bullshit in there, it's just like, oh, fuck it off me, smile off myself. But regardless, Sarah's going to study and try to figure out how to get out of the time loop. And so Niles, he's, he goes back to the bar a couple times. He gets in a fight with a couple of the bartenders. They go shooting also before this. Um, but they're just getting a bunch of fun, different little quick scenes of enjoying their days and doing different stuff. And so regardless... Sarah comes back, she tests it out, a goat, like literally walks a goat into the cave, and then like, you know, if we blow ourselves up right at this time, we can get out of the time loop. And so, Niles is like, getting very, very nonchalant, comfortable, and repeating the same day over and over again, and he, he figures out one day that he wakes up, or when he can't find Sarah, she, he smells, he's in the room with the, the brides, or the, the, the groom's party, and smells this. You know, they have, they have some, some joke about some fragrance, but he smells the fra Sarah's fragrance on Abe's pillow, who was getting married to her sister Tala that day. And so Niles realizes the reason Sarah doesn't want to relive the same day over and over again is because she cheated on her sister with, with her husband, or cheated on, ch cheated with her sister's soon-to-be fiancé or husband, and, and regrets it a bunch. And so that's the real reason Sarah doesn't, uh, doesn't want to... Um, uh, stop it happening. At which point, at some point in this time, Niles admits that her and Sarah have had sex a bunch of times. And again, they do have sex in the, in the re repeat day one time. Again, not, it's not a sex scene. But they're doing mushrooms out in the desert and see some dinosaurs and then they have sex. And then they, you know, that's when they have their, their romances started. And then Sarah goes to study the, the quantum thing because she can't stand waking up next to Abe every day. And so regardless, um... Then what happens? Uh, yeah, so Sarah basically gives Niles an ultimatum, like, you know, not even really, like, for dating, but just, like, I'm going to try to get out of this thing if you're not going to, and Niles is originally, like, no, I'm not going to do so, and that's that. And so they, they do the ceremony, and the cave opens up, again, like, at, like, 11 o'clock at night after the, after, the, after the wedding. And so Niles is at the bar, and then he realizes that he really likes Sarah, or loves Sarah, and so whatever Sarah's going to do, he's going to do. And so he's, he's got a mad rush to get back to, to get to the cave before she goes in there without him. He goes back to the dude where they went shooting and like says, because again, Niles knows all the things about the characters because he's been there for so long. He, he pretends to be this, this, again, another blue collar, rough and tumble looking dude, Westerner, um, pretends to be his son to get his motorcycle to, um, to drive into the cave. So he gets driven to the cave, gets there on time, um, goes into the cave, has another nice speech he, he does Niles is right he does have some more just like philosophical bullshit but in the context of the, of the movie it was not off-putting but gets up there decides to join with Sarah and they go into the cave and blow themselves up and the next thing you see is them again once again floating on the pizza slices in this pool and the pool that they're at is was at a house where they're it's not Niles' house but it's just the people aren't home and they repeat the same day, so he just he knows that he can just stay in the pool. But regardless, they, they wake up, or you see them in the pool, you're not sure if they've gotten out or not, and then, and then the family comes home. So it, it does seem to see at the end that they, they did get out of the time loop and they did get to live their lives in a, in a budding romance. So overall, I thought that the raunchy tone comedy 
interesting writing, all came together very well. So B plus. Again, similar movies. And any time with ones like there was a there's a movie that I'm going to review that was probably the only good horror movie that I really liked it was 1408, which was another kind of like time loop, not not super similar in the sense of like tone or comedy versus horror, but time time loop type of movie. I've also seen another one that was like teenage girls that were like one was stuck in a time loop or something, as well. So I forget the name of that one. It's certainly some similar movies to this theme. The major themes, again, it's kind of like nihilism versus romance. Again, Niall's characterization is very calm and collected with just repeating the same day over and over again. Um, romance, dating, some commentary on, on marriage. <clears throat> There's another scene where Niles and Roy kind of, well, I missed two scenes. Roy slam, like, follows them in a car and he's a policeman and Sarah, like, rams him in, like, acts like she, she's getting abducted and then rams Roy who's also, Roy's also again stuck in a time loop, ram, so they kind of leave him, he's still kind of stuck but but he, Sarah rams him as he's pretending to be a cop and he's going to kill Niles, because the whole time Roy's just hunting Niles for getting him stuck in this stuff and so there's that scene and then uh, I think there, were, there was one other I missed but it doesn't, doesn't really matter, but so overall that's what I thought, it was, I thought it was thoroughly entertaining Commentary, some commentary on nihilism, some commentary on romance. Overall, I thought it was just a fun, playful, playful movie that was outside of the boring action movies I've been watching day in and day out. So overall, B+, thank you for watching my review of Palm Springs, and I'll see you on the next one.